All right, welcome everybody. Chris Petri here. Let's get right into it. We're actually going to cover some beautiful compositions here. We're going to actually look at colors. Uh, we're going to look at paper, what kind of paper we're using, what kind of colors, and then what kind of actually our designs of our compositions and styles of paintings we're going to do. So for this tutorial, we're going to cover uh, sky washes with rolling hills. We're going to cover ocean and beach with rolling waves, crashing waves, beautiful um, beach settings, the ocean, the coast, and then we're going to also cover some beautiful uh, landscapes with some trees and bushes and distant beautiful purple mountains and rolling hills and green grass. So we're going to have those three, st you know, style compositions, and then we're going to actually also at the same time see how they look when we're painting them on satin paper, arches satin paper, and then arches rough paper. So we're covering basically arches satin and rough paper, and how we can utilize uh, the best qualities of these papers with our swatches and kind of talk about as we go through the video, we'll cover all the aspects of how they're looking, what the washes are doing, what the colors are doing, how can we kind of uh, game plan when we're doing our paintings on these different style papers, um, what can we expect when we're going to paint a painting on these types of papers. So we're going to learn a lot of information here. I want you to buckle in, strap in, and really have a great time here. Um, we're going to just get started in a second. Um, we'll actually, um, uh, we're going to use a stencil to start with. So you don't have to use a stencil, but I do have a stencil. I'll cover this stencil, the brand, the model number of this. It's a great, I've had this for many, many years. I use it all the time when I'm doing my swatches and doing my compositions um, in preparation for larger paintings, let's say, or other work that I'm doing. So join along here. We're having fun, and we'll see you in just a second. We'll get started. We'll do some preliminary uh, uh, coverage of what we're going to do throughout the whole video, and uh, we'll see you in just a second. Okay, everybody, we're going to get uh, started and get rolling here. First thing I'll do is I'll get a stencil. And you just saw the finished um, compositions that we did. We were kind of practicing up on our papers. And again, we explained that we have arches uh, satin paper and arches rough paper. Uh, again, we'll just show the, the arches rough paper has the orange cover, rough. And then the satin paper. The satin paper has the uh, pink color top on it. So these are blocks. Um, so arches has been known like watercolor. All the all the top uh, many top pros use arches. No no question about it. You'll you'll notice that when you see their videos and so forth. Just great paper, watercolor paper. And I use uh, other papers too. Um, but the arches is kind of like a good staple to, to try out if you're um, working with watercolors. Maybe you use Fabriano or Buckingford or some other um, papers. But arches seems to be like a really, they stock it at the stores a lot. Like all the, my local um, art supply stores, they all have it. Uh, I know when I order online usually from like Blix, Blix always has it, or blocks. So just a gray paper. So we're going to kind of see how these uh, perform with some simple examples here. We're going to do maybe a sky. Of course, we just saw the finished uh, compositions that we did. So we'll, we'll start out with the sky wash. Maybe we'll do an ocean, and then maybe we'll do some hills and some trees and mountains and something, you know, something like that. So I'll just maybe use... Um, Rather than use a stencil, sometimes stencils can be limiting, but in, in a sense they are good. Let's use a stencil actually, because we have three, three divisions here, so let's do that. One, two, three. And the reason these are good too, the stencils, this happens to be a Fiskars, uh, Fiskars stencil. And these are rectangles, and the number is 4853. So Fiskars 4853. 
the model number, 4853. I have a couple different Fisker. I think I have circles, ovals, rectangles, squares. Um, these are great. <clears throat> and then we'll just uh, we'll do these over here. And we'll do the same thing. We'll do three over here. And I'm using a 4B pencil. It's good, it's good and dark. You can see it clearly on the video here. And so, <clears throat> again, we're going to see how these papers... You can get different looks with rough paper versus smooth satin paper. I like using both. Mostly I use rough paper. I use mostly Artistico and Arches rough paper, white rough paper. And sometimes I'll use satin paper too. It has a nice uh, look to it. The uh, feel for the washes look really, really good. So we'll, we'll try out some washes here. I'll maybe uh, get some fresh water here. And uh, we'll get a brush. I'll maybe use a Raphael number six. For right now, I think that'll be good for these compositions. Let's um, see. I might. Okay, let's. I want to sketch out just a few, like for the first swatch, let's do the sky. But let's do a little bit of a little bit of ground here. Okay, so first thing I'll do on the satin papers, I'll put some pre-wet the paper a little bit here and there, not everywhere. Um, with clean water, fresh clean water. Just a little bit here and there, not everywhere, and we'll do that. Then we'll, maybe we'll run a damp line, and we'll put a damp line with our brush, with a damp brush along the mountain or field here on the bottom, just so it doesn't, the sky wash doesn't run down into that. <clears throat> and then let's get some sky wash and see how we, do here. Let's use some cerulean blue. French ultramarine blue. So we'll have some dark and medium blue, maybe a little bit of cobalt blue as well. We'll mix up those three for our sky wash with a little bit of raw umber. Just mixed in there a little bit. And we'll see how this looks. We'll start putting that in. And then here's where you have fun. You just kind of let the watercolor paper do the the work for you. Sometimes that's, you know, you just set a couple of bits of color there onto the paper. And then already we have some clouds. So we can see some clouds forming on the top here. So this is again where we have a lot of fun with watercolors. Um, and those of you that have been painting many years, you always know this is really the fun part of watercolor. It does do all kinds of interesting things just on its own. So I'm just really wetting the paper, pre-wetting the paper. And then once I do that, I can get some really interesting effects here, especially with the satin paper here. So we're getting cloud effects. And then as we go across here, I'm going to try to make smaller um, horizontal clouds in the distance. So they're, they're larger and puffier up top here. And then as we go into the distance, they're more, we have the distant clouds going into the far miles and miles and miles away and that gives you a sense of peacefulness that you're that you're looking at a really beautiful sky we we'll use a, a distant sky we we'll use some orange just we always add a little orange to the base of the sky that we're along the the mountains or the hills or city scene you have if you have buildings 
and you mix that in with the blue and just put a tiny little bit of atmospheric orange, which is the haze and the warm feeling you have along the ground on the earth. And the sky is much cooler and peaceful. And there we go. And then as we work that orange up just a little bit, then we go in with some green for our hills. A little bit of green and blue, raw umber. And we'll just kind of do a very, just an indication of some, some grass fields and rolling hills here. That is peaceful. You can almost feel like you're standing in a field and looking at a beautiful sky with clouds and seeing off into the far distance. We can even leave some white paper on the top of those mountains. That can be some distant, distant mountains. We could add some purple, which is, uh, I use ultramarine violet by Winsor Newton. I think that seems to be the best. I just really enjoy that. The ultramarine violet by Winsor Newton it seems to be my favorite tube color to buy for the, my purple. Also a great, um, a great mix is French ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. You can make some great purples with that too. If you happen to run out of some purple paint or something like that, you can you can mix great purples with those two colors. And I put a little purple in there. And that's our first satin paper. Skywash, some clouds. Let's try the same thing over here. So we'll start out fresh clean water for the most part. I haven't really mixed or cleaned up the brush too many times in my water pail, so it's still rather fresh clean water. And again, I'm putting some pre-wetting the paper here. Not everywhere though, just kind of like in spots here and there. And then I am putting a damp line right on the top of the mountain area so that the Again, the sky wash doesn't leak down into the ground area, the um, rolling hills here. So if I just put a little damp bit of brush stroke along the top of that mountain, just a little bit of dampness is all it needs. The water won't run down like that and then into the mountain areas and the hills. Okay, so now we're going to use the same colors we're going to see how that looks, same colors. So it's uh, cerulean blue, French ultramarine blue, a little bit of cobalt blue, a little bit of raw umber, just to get a little mixture of warm and cool. And we're gonna do the same thing. Pick up our colors. And I'm just dancing and dabbing the brush along to see how that looks. A little bit of the raw umber. And then we'll do the same thing again. We'll take the blue and just do those really nice long horizontal lines in the distance here for the clouds in the distance. Like that. Maybe even here too we'll do like this. That looks pretty good as well. And we're going to let that just do its thing. You can always go a little darker with some French Ultramarine Blue. Uh, at the higher portions of the sky. You'll probably notice when you're out looking at the skies, when you're outdoors and painting or just doing your everyday um, comings and goings and things, you'll notice the sky does look darker in tonal value at the higher regions. And then as it gets closer to the earth, you'll notice the sky lightens up a little bit. So that's kind of the same idea we try to do when we 
to our clouds. And then over here, if you, we see, maybe that looks better with a little bit of blue there. And I'm not saying these are the greatest clouds ever. I'm just trying to kind of see the feel we get with the paper. This we can see is softer looking. And this is still drying, but... This still looks a little softer, and this looks a little more like it has some more grainy and texture, it has texture to it. So this is a soft, smooth, and this is like a kind of a grainier feel to it, like it's got more texture. And we'll do the same idea. We'll get some sap green, uh, some raw umber, and we'll just do some uh, some rolling hills here. Raw umber, and I don't really worry too much. I leave a little white line there. I mix my colors too, warm and cool. So green tends to be cool. Raw umber is warm. So I try to mix them both. Seems to be a good combination for this rolling hill. And we just have a happy hill here. And we're going to put some purple too along this, tops of this. We'll let that dry just a little bit, maybe. So maybe we'll take a break now. So I hope you'll take a quick break. And we'll let this set up and dry, this hill we just did. And the sky, too. The sky wash is still wet. We need to add a little orange to this bottom of the horizon line here, to the sky. And we should add some purple to these distant mountains so we get a feeling of nice three-dimensional quality of step stepping back into the painting with some purple in those mountains in the distance. And so if we let this dry and set up, we'll be able to accomplish that a lot easier. If we were to go in now and do it, putting in that purple, it's just going to mix and get out of control and the wash will go all different ways. And one thing with watercolor is you'll always hear me say this, and I know many of you have been watching me for a long time. We let the, we'll let that first wash dry. So this is like the glazing technique, essentially. We get this whole first wash on and we let it dry completely. And then we'll go back in and do some more work. So that's about... Uh, where we are right now, we um, have gotten both of these done pretty quickly, and we're looking at the effects of the different watercolor papers, arches, of course, and um, let's take a break, and we'll come right back, and we'll finish this swatch up, and then we'll start working on the next one. All right, so we are back, and we are in good shape. We, we let this dry. I took about a 15, 20-minute break, and now that I've come back, I can kind of see we can get some more of that purple for the mountains here, which really looks great. And if you just, if you made this a, a lot larger, you'd have a, like a really good looking sky, big sky with some land at the bottom here and some purple mountains in the distance. Looks fantastic. So these two, we're, we're complete. We'll maybe go back to the, these two and kind of just discuss a little bit about what we're seeing there. But we did say for the most part very smooth for these washes here on the satin paper. And then this is more has more grain and more texture to it. It looks more like, you know, if you were kind of thinking of, you know, maybe thinking of it as this might be like a smooth, uh, like uh, smooth floor, like tiles or uh, laminate floors or maybe like something like that. And then this might be like carpeting where it's got more texture to it carpeting so you kind of have two different kind of looks and feels so more of a smoother surface and more of a like a um, grainier and uh, textured surface so and that's how the paint looks on there too so we'll do another sketch here we'll try to sketch out another we'll do some ocean we'll do some ocean next here so here let's do about yeah, let's do two-thirds ocean. So this is going to be our distant ocean horizon line. We'll just go right across and do it over here too the same way. So you can imagine that's about two-thirds of the way up. So if this is one-third, two-thirds. Same thing with this, one-third up and two-thirds up. That'll give us our distant horizon line of the ocean. And again, these are just fun compositions. You can 
then parlay these into larger paintings, use the same ratios with sky and water, mountains and sky. You can use the same ratios. You can add some things in, maybe a barn, maybe a windmill, maybe some interesting, uh, you know, maybe a, a, a shack or a house. So you can add things into this, but this would be the base of your painting, you know, the, the ground level and the sky. And this one here, we're going to do sky and ocean and water. So we'll get started on this. First thing we'll do is let's let's do the ocean portion first. And I like to always, with my oceans, I like to make them dark in the distance. Um, so I use sap green. I can leave my blue in here. So I don't necessarily have to clean up the palette on this composition that we're doing here, on this water composition area. I'm going with uh, blue and green. Now the key thing here to remember is we're not going to use too much water. We're going to use like, mm, I would say very, very little water. I'm just going to say once you go in and clean your brush and you come in to your palette and you're going to start mixing your colors, don't even go back to the palette any, or the water anymore, I would say. That's, that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm not going to go back to the water container at all. I just did my first rinse of the brush. I come over here. I get my sap green. Then I'm going to add some French ultramarine blue. Uh, again, I want to make a nice dark blue, greenish blue for the ocean, the distant ocean horizon line. And then maybe even some uh, red in there, so warm and cool. So some uh, burnt sienna, just to have some interesting variation, warm and cool everywhere. And then I'm just going to go across very carefully and just, you could put some tape across here if you wanted to. Some uh, artist tape or draft drafting tape. You would put it on the sky area and then paint up to the tape. If you want to get it really perfectly straight, you can do that. All right, so that looks good. I put some thick, rich green and blue paint along here. Then what I'll do is, right away, I'm a, then I'm going to rinse my brush now. I've got some really good thick paint on there. I'll have a tissue with me too. I like to have a tissue to dry off some water. So I'm going to dry off a little bit of water off the brush after I rinse the brush. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to try to have some white caps out here, some nice waves. So I'll just carefully start to go into the blue and green and a little bit of that burnt sienna. And I'm just going to sort of do that back and forth, kind of like the waves. If you move your brush the same way the waves are moving, you're going to tend to have more realistic ocean. Uh, just kind of, I always mention this when I paint. Do you notice that? If you kind of do things like if you want to create wind in a painting, you might want to move your brush kind of like, like the wind, like whew, here we're trying to do waves, let's... If we try to go back and forth like this, you'll notice you really do get some really nice waves and things. I'm trying to get some white caps in here. Then I'll start going in again some uh, cobalt blue and cerulean blue as we get closer to shore here. So now I'm going to start doing that. But if I just do that kind of wave, wave action like this, that does really tend to work really well. So if you just, if you follow along with me on this video and you're kind of saying, how do I get that look? I'm just saying it really is kind of easy. It's just doing like that, you know, like the waves of the ocean, just the choppiness like that. And that's all. And again, you can parlay this into a larger painting. All you would do is you'd have larger paper, larger brush, probably have a larger palette too. You'd have want to have more of a mixing area and you could make this like a 24 by 36 inch painting. And you might have to practice up a little bit up with your larger brush, so you'd have to get a larger brush. And you know, it's just a matter if you want to go from small compositions like this, and these are great to always start with first if you're going to come up with an idea with your paintings. Um, many of the great artists, um, like I know 
off the top of my head, I, I know it's um, Norman Rockwell, who's an incredible watercolor artist, very famous. Um, he used to always do like 12, 12 of these small compositions before he would try to create a, like a full-size painting. So he would work out a whole bunch of ideas on small compositions like this, and then he would formulate different color patterns and all kinds of cool stuff like that. So we're kind of doing the same thing. We're going to just admit to ourselves, you know, success leaves clues. So if we know someone that's really did a great job with um, their watercolors years ago, we can follow what they did too. And maybe we have some of that same success and that same positivity of getting the good results we want. So I think this is good now. We have our waves. We'll do some sand, which is uh, raw sienna, just a little bit of raw sienna I'm using here. Just like that, at the bottom of the picture, it's the swatch. And that's great. And then now we can just do a simple sky. Touch of orange for the, here I'd be really careful, I'd leave space between the sky and the water with your brush. I wouldn't paint up close to that ocean yet because it's still drying. So there I put on that little bit of orange and then some more blue. And this will be a simple sky like that. And sometimes when we do this, when we just do one or two or three brush strokes for a sky and we let it go and that's it. It kind of looks really cool. It looks like there's clouds on the horizon there and I really didn't do a whole lot. I just added that little bit of orange. You saw how I did that. A little bit of that orange, touch of orange paint across the bottom. Then a little bit of the cerulean blue on the top. A couple brush strokes and I just left it be. And now all of a sudden I'm seeing some really cool formations of clouds and it's mysterious. It looks real realistic and really good. So we're going to leave this one like this. I think that looks great. And again, the satin paper. And uh, let's, I'm going to take a quick break. I imagine that, you know, you know, if, if you're at home, you'll just continue doing and working on this. I, I, I tend to take breaks. Um, so this one here, I worked a little more intensively. So I'd like to take a break. And uh, I will maybe add a little bit of Viridian Green here. That might look good. It even adds more color variation, which I think is good. So yeah, that looks better even. Okay, just a feel of the ocean water along the shore. Maybe we can soften this up a little bit and make this a little bit less dark. And then it just looks good. We just kind of work that color down into the water. Sometimes it might look a little too dark at the... And maybe there's not as much choppiness out in the distant ocean, but it's more... We'll see some waves as it, the ocean comes in closer to the shore. Okay, so I'm going to take a break and we'll start on this over here, this swatch next. Okay, so we're moving right along over here to the next swatch. We're going to repeat this same ocean composition right over to here. So we'll use this one as our guide to, to do this one here. And we'll just do the same, repeat the same colors and the same process that we did for here. So the first thing we did was we, of course, we have our, we drew in our, our sketch line for the distant ocean, uh, the horizon line for the ocean here. We did that at the same time. And then we mixed up a little bit of French ultramarine blue, sap green, and a touch of the burnt sienna for that little bit of warm and cool. Everywhere warm and cool, you can always kind of tell yourself you're never going to go wrong with just mixing a little bit of warm and cool colors all the time throughout your painting. 
even if it's a little subtle, like I'm using just a little subtle warm color that burns sienna in my blue and green, sap green and French ultramarine blue. But you, I think you will notice if you practice or practice around with it and check it out when you're doing your paintings and even when you're doing these swatches, you know, kind of see how that is. Maybe you'll try a few without the burnt sienna and then try a few with the burnt sienna. Um, and you'll notice that it does tend to have a really nice, beautiful sparkle to the colors. Like it just excites the colors a little more if you're adding a little warm and cool all the time. Um, you know, it might be predominantly blue that we're doing the ocean, but if you do have that little bit of red in there or even maybe a little, some raw umber you could use probably, or you can mix around and try some different colors. Maybe some alizarin crimson would work really nicely too. You know, you kind of, everyone has different color, um, I guess, feelings about colors and what you like to see on your paintings. So you, you're the artist, you create your own color um, mixes and things, but I, I guess I'm just showing you what I do. And uh, so we're gonna, again, repeat the same process we did here. So what we did was, let's do some tape on this one. Since we said we could use tape, I'll just get a small piece of the um, drafting tape or artist tape. And I'll just make sure it's kind of look, it's kind of, I'll press it down just where the edge is, just to make sure it's pretty good. There we go. And this way you, it, you will have a better, sharper edge with that. If you like to have that uh, more cleaner line, crisp, clean line there, you can do that. And again, some white caps out here. We, we, we tend. I'm, I'm just going to make a general observation with um, the soft um, satin paper. Satin paper. When you use satin paper, it, the, the washes move around a little more, so you get more blending, and you don't get as much crisp uh, lines like we can kind of see here. These clouds up here kind of blended together a lot more where here you have more crisper lines around your clouds. So right away we've learned that the softer, smoother, silkier, smooth paper, you're going to have more, the washes are going to move around more, they're going to kind of blend more. When you're using um, the rough paper, the washes aren't going to move, as ra move around as much, so you'll have more sharper lines. So we're going to kind of see that here. And we'll use some cerulean blue now. So we're going to start mixing in cerulean blue and a little bit of the um, viridian green. Like that. And I will mix a little more of this at the same time. And then like we said, now we'll start doing some maybe some of that back and forth, like, like almost like X strokes like this, just to get that choppiness feeling. And it's sometimes hard to do that on the edges, so maybe the edges we just kind of, we just maybe at the edges of the painting we can just bring, bring those in like this, like that. But I think already that's looking good, and you can lighten this up over here if you want to. Maybe blend that in like we did over here, so we're blending this up here, maybe. There's not as much... Uh... Not as much darker color now. We kind of blended and... We blended and soft... Made a little bit... Made that color a little softer. You can even sometimes blot up a little bit of paint like that. And then you could go back in and get some French ultramarine blue. And uh, sap green and maybe get a little bit of a darker, like that. And then uh, maybe some Viridian Green. And again, I dry off my brush, I rinse off my brush, dry it off on a paper towel or tissue, and then you can go in and get some Cerulean Blue and Viridian Green. So now it's just very little water on the brush, you can even dry off a little bit of paint like that on the tissue so you don't have too much paint and water on there. And then you can even drag the brush across like this along the paper. Like that. 
that looks good. So rough paper, you can get some really cool, here it's smoother, here we can get some more rougher looking uh, washes and brush strokes on here. So I'm using the, uh, this is yellow ochre and raw sienna. I dry off a little bit of the paint on a paper towel or a tissue, and then you can just drag the brush across like so and get some of that. Oh, doesn't that look good? That's like that cool, that sand feel, right? It's like kind of rough and sand and gritty. So that is looking really good. Then I'll just carefully, maybe I'll make it really solid along the bottom edge here. And you'll experiment with these type of techniques as you go. You know, we'll, we'll constantly go back to some swatches like this every now and again. I like to do these type of tutorials so you can kind of take a break from the regular, just, you know, um, banging out paintings left and right. You, you take a break sometimes and you do some of these swatches and have fun with the colors and doing little things like this and it really helps out. You get a break too from just trying to do paintings all the time. I'm the same way too. Sometimes I just like to take a break and do more like swatches and exercises, practice some brush strokes, or maybe just try mixing colors and do some color swatches and experiment with some color mixes and things like that. So I'm hoping you'll do the same thing. It's always good to take breaks from the normal routine. So um, you're the artist though, you'll, you'll know what to do. Everyone's different though, so you can decide what, how you want to do your, your painting exercises and paintings and things like that. So now let's do the sky wash. We're gonna, we're gonna do the same process again. So we'll rinse off the brush. At this point, I'm gonna uh, put some new water in the uh, bucket here. So I'll get some fresh, clean water now. And we'll pick up some of that touch of uh, cadmium orange, just a little bit like that. And we'll go across like this. I'll rinse off my brush again, dry it off on the paper towel a little bit. I don't want too much, just a little bit like that, and go across. Like that. And then we go in and get some cerulean blue with the other blues here, a little bit of French ultramarine blue. And then we go across the top with just another. And again, less is more. Less is more if you can just do maybe a little bit of a few brush strokes and that's it, walk away from it. And then you'll notice all of a sudden, once that paint starts to dry and blend on the paper, it creates its own wonderful look. So that's where you hear watercolor artists say, some of the top pros will tell you. Watercolor does a lot of things on its own. We just let it do what it does, and it really looks fantastic. So I'm hoping that you're going to uh, experiment with that idea and let uh, your washes mix and blend, and you can kind of just sometimes get a few bits of wash on and just kind of sit back and watch and look, and you'll notice that it does actually look very natural and very beautiful with less overworking with too many brush strokes on there. So that is really fun with watercolor. You, you don't have to do too much with the brush strokes and things. You can just kind of get some paint on there and let it flow and it looks great. All right, so we've already done two thirds of our work is complete now. We're just gonna do two more swatches. Maybe we'll do some, let's do some bushes and trees and we'll, we'll see how the effects of um, Again, the rough paper and the satin paper, how we can do some a greenery and, and some bushes and trees, and we'll, we'll see how it looks. But we'll just take a break, and I always mention, if you haven't subscribed yet, on the right-hand side below here, there's a subscribe button. All that does is, the next time you open up YouTube, you'll see my video there. If I've created a new video, you'll be alerted that we've created an, another uh, tutorial, and you can watch along. So that's all it is, really, just it alerts you when my new videos are coming out. This way you don't lose me. I know I've had people tell me they watch my video and it took them like months to find me again for some reason. I don't know why, but so if you didn't remember my name or something, that could happen. So instead of 
losing me on YouTube, all you do is hit the subscribe button. This way I'm in your subscriptions and you can always find me in your subscriptions button. Or like I said, you'll always get my new videos um, popping up into your uh, YouTube when I create a new video. So maybe once a week you'll see my video or two videos pop up into your uh, YouTube channel when you open up. So you won't miss a thing. Okay. All right. So let's, let's keep working here. I'm going to take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll do our last two swatches and we'll do some fun trees and shrubs and grass and we'll see what kind of effects we get. Okay. I'll be right back. All right. So now we're going to start a little bit of our landscape uh, style compositions here. So let's, uh, I'm just going to find a pencil over here. And let's um, I think I'm just going to do a, a rolling hill here. I'll do the same thing over here, a nice rolling hill like that. And then maybe uh, maybe over here I'm just going to do a, a tree, a good sized tree. We have a happy tree over here. Um, I'll do the same thing over here. And just a couple indications of some branches. We'll, we'll use a um, needlepoint brush in just a few minutes. We'll use a needlepoint brush to do the fine calligraphy of the branches of this tree. But for right now, all we need is an indication of where this uh, tree is going to sit in this painting. A little bit over here to the left. Maybe a, a bush or something here too. Um, we'll just back and forth both sides. We're going to do the same thing here. Another bush here. Like that. So we have some rolling hills in a field. We have a good sized tree here that's going to fill up a good size of the picture frame with that. And uh, maybe we have some distant mountains too. So we're going to do some distant mountains in the, like this. Just like this. So we have some distant purple mountains. Uh, this is like a rolling hill here, a mild uh, rolling hill. Some grass, some dirt, rocks, interesting things. We're going to have a large tree here. We'll see how our tree effects work on both the satin and the rough paper. And then a sky. We'll put the sky wash in. You know what? Maybe we'll do the sky wash first. So we're going to use the we always talk about what kind of methods we're going to use with our watercolors, and here we use the glazing method up here on these two, which is where we put that first wash of the sky in, let that dry a little bit, and then we, and the, mount, and the grass uh, hill here too as well, let that dry a little bit. Then we went in and did our purple mountains for our second wash or our second glazing. And then on our uh, ocean here, we did the um, a la prima method, more or less. We started with the ocean and just worked our way down and did the ocean a la prima all at one time. And then all at one time, we once it dried a little bit, we just went right back up here and all at one time, we just did the sky wash. So glazing technique up here on the first uh, sky compositions, a la prima here with our ocean uh, compositions, swatches. And then here on the bottom, we're going to use the a la prima method. Uh, I should say the glazing technique uh, and glazing method, which is similar to this up here. We're going to get a glazing in first, let it dry, then come back over and do subsequent washes on top. So I have clean water in my bucket here and we're going to start along the journey on our first comp composition here, our first uh, swatch for our tree and distant hills and rolling hills. Let's get our sky wash in. So French ultramarine blue. We can leave all these colors in because they're the same as we're, we've been using before. So we're not going to really need to change up anything. I'll have my tissue uh, handy just in case I need to dry off my brush a little bit. 
I'll rinse off and I'll use some fresh clean water and I'll just start putting in here and there, not everywhere, fresh clean water in the sky. I dab it on. I tend to I tend to put a damp bit of clean water all the way across the top portion here. And I did that for all of these really, or especially up here for the glazing technique up here. I put that wash. We want to have kind of like a nice crisp edge all the way along the top here. Then as we go down here we can do it spotty, you know what I mean? We just kind of here and there we add some water in there. And then we can also add a little bit of a damp edge along the rolling hills and distant mountains here. So I'm going to go with a damp brush just along the tops so we don't have too much water flowing down into the the bottom area of our composition here. Same as we did up here. Okay, now we have that complete. Fresh clean water. And we also remember, we, uh, we recall that with satin paper, the really smooth paper we have here, the, the washes are going to flow a lot more and kind of mix and mingle. And on the rough paper, you're going to have less mixing and mingling, so you'll have more sharper edges. So you'll be able to maybe have easy, an easier time doing clouds and things like that. So just a little informational here. I try to always cover, uh, you know, the tidbits of information you'll need so that when you're doing these tutorials and exercises, you're going to have more um, success as you do them. And uh, let's start out with some blue sky. Cobalt blue, French ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, a little bit of uh, raw umber. Let's try that. Cobalt blue. And again, we're letting the watercolor do its work. It's do its own thing. Put a little bit of little bit of paint on there and it kind of just does its own beautiful thing it does just mixing and mingling and we're doing some clouds cerulean blue and then maybe here we're going to do some That's it. A little bit of orange. Cadmium orange. Just a little bit of orange. A touch of orange. I dry off, or I take off a little bit of orange on my brush so I don't have too much on there. And that's what we want to do. And we just want to add a little bit of orange to the, to the lower portion of the sky. Just like that. A little bit. That really rings true. Always notice in nature I had a great artist one time tell me, always try to observe nature casually when you're out just living life and you're doing, you're going here, you're going there, you know, going shopping, you're going to work, you're coming home from work. You're concentrating all the time on, the, you know, the important things. You want to keep your eyes on the road if you're driving or maybe if you're taking mass transit or something like that. You have more time. You can observe things a little more casually and intensely or, you know, acutely because you're not really having to worry about driving, you know, steering and braking and watching out for other cars zooming by. So, but if you do ca casually just think about it from an artist's perspective, you're the artist, you're looking out in the your everyday surroundings <clears throat> and you can start looking at the sky and you'll notice, how does the sky look? What colors do you see? Is the sky darker at the top like we're doing here? Is there a little bit of a, a golden orange haze along the sky where it meets the earth? These things you kind of just, you notice, you try to kind of like make a little mental note. Oh yeah, wow. It does look like that, that there's a little bit of an orange golden haze along the, um, 
ground, mountains, or the ground, your, your horizon line, where your earth meets the sky, things like this, you just kind of take note of it, mental note of it, and that's all. And then when you're doing your artwork and you're doing your compositions and your paintings, you can bring that into your, your work and your paintings and say, wow, I've seen this in real life and I know it's true, I know it's real, and, you know, it'll be something of your own. It's like a personal thing you can have as an artist where you kind of have observed it yourself and you, you know what I mean? You're kind of, you're not trusting me just, I, I, don't, I always say like, don't trust me 100%, always verify like what I'm saying try to see if it's true. If I tell you that there's a little bit of an orange a glow and haze along the horizon line and along the earth where it meets the sky, try to go out, maybe just observe it when you're out casually doing things and say, oh yeah, I do see that. It does look, that's true. What Chris said is real. It's, it really is a real phenomenon or a real scientific thing. It's the, you can see a little bit of a warm orangey, um, color along the horizon line, along where the earth meets the sky. So these type of things, I want you to experience them yourself and, and just, you know, that's all. Just so you have it, you know, it's like a tool in your toolbox. If you have, you know, a toolbox and you want things in there, screwdrivers, wrenches, uh, you know, uh, hammers, all these different things, part of the toolbox, having things in there is knowledge. So knowledge is going to be power for you. And if you can kind of observe these things in, in, in real life, it'll be more real to you and you'll really be able to trust it and say, yeah, I can always do this in any painting I'm doing because I know it really is true. If I told you that there was a, um, um, I don't know, if there was a green color along the, where the sky meets the ground, there was a green color that went across there, like a green haze. And if you didn't see that, you would, you know, and you did, and you just started doing it, you might, you know, it might not look great, but if I mislead you or something like that, or say something that's not correct, you know, you, you wouldn't feel happy about that. You might say, oh, someone complained about my painting saying it looks funny, <laughs> the colors or something like that. So always check out what I'm saying too. Please do it. Please verify what I'm telling you. See if it's correct. And if not, then you can always too, we can always, you can leave a comment in the comment section and say, hey, Chris, I don't think it's really true that there's a orangey kind of glow along the horizon line where the sky meets the the ground and the earth's surface. And then, and then, you know, we can maybe have some, you know, discussion about it and maybe take some photos or whatever else. We can have fun with it. But what I'm saying is as an artist, you know, try to observe your natural surroundings and you can put those those things in your toolbox as an artist and you can say, wow, yeah. Chris is really, he's kind of like saying things that are really make sense and are actually real. I'm seeing it out in real life. Same thing with, um, uh, you know, the color of yellow ochre. Yellow ochre, that is very much the color of light, especially like in the dawn, in the morning. If you're out first thing in the morning, you'll see that light looks yellow ochre. It looks like yellow ochre if you see it in the trees or if you see it on the roadways or in fields you'll notice that light looks like yellow ochre especially at sunrise so that's another thing you can kind of like have to think about and you might observe that in nature and you might say wow chris is actually he did observe that in real life and he's he's telling us that what he's seeing is true and he's trying to pass it along so now I'm going to go in and get raw umber and blue so I'm using some blue and raw umber and I'm going to try to make my rolling hills here some yellow ochre And again, we're doing the glazing technique. And I think I can get some purple mountains in the background here.
Okay, <clears throat> so now we have the satin paper. Sky wash is in. The ground, the rolling hills here, the distant mountains. Everything looks good there. We just have to do the tree, but we have to let all this dry 100%. So let's start over here on this swatch. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take fresh, clean water. Again, I'm going to go right across the top of the swatch here, right in the rectangle. I'm going to dampen that whole top area. And then as I come down the page, just here and there, I'm going to add some damp water, some damp uh, brush strokes to the paper. Not everywhere, so I don't want to dampen the paper everywhere, just here and there. And then I want to make a damp line right where the sky meets the ground in the mountains here. So I'm just taking my damp brush and going right along the mountains like that. And that should be good. And then we'll go right in to some cerulean blue, French ultramarine blue, a little bit of raw umber here just to mix it up a little bit, a little bit of warm and cool everywhere. And let's get some sky washes going up here. And again, if I can... If I can do this... Darker up here. Let the watercolor do its thing. Let it kind of blend and mix and mingle. If you have a couple splashes, you don't have to worry. You just plot it up quick. And we'll go right across here. And then the clouds get thinner toward the bottom of this. And we add some of that orange, again, toward the horizon line here. Like that. With a little bit of blue mixed in there. And there we have a beautiful sky. Look how easy that was. We just let the watercolor do its thing. Let it do its beautiful work of just mixing and mingling with the clean water we put on. We have some clouds in there. So everything is looking fine here. And again, we said more crisper uh, washes. You, you can achieve like much more crisper lines and defined lines, sharper lines, and uh, sharper edges with your washes if you're using your arches rough paper. If you're using arches satin paper, you can have more of a smooth, beautiful, smooth looking painting. So you can kind of, if you want to, eventually you might pick up some arches paper and try out these two different style papers. They make other papers that are great too, that are satin or rough paper. So you can, you know, it's always good to just try some different papers now and again. You're the you're the artist. You'll take me up on that challenge of getting some paper once in a while and trying some new papers maybe. Maybe you're used to using a different paper than arches or something and you know you might want to maybe we'll try out some other papers too. Here on my channel I like to do things different as you know. So we'll try some new papers eventually. I think this looks really good. We'll let this dry and now we can come over here and I think this is, it's getting dry but it's still a little bit damp. I want to wait a little more till this dries so we'll take one more break and uh, and I think once we take one more break for like 15 minutes this will be dry enough that we can start creating our trees here and some bushes and then by the time we're done with that we can just come right over here, hop, skip and a jump over here and we'll do this tree over here and some bushes in the in landscape here. And I think we can actually do the landscape right now here. So I'm going to get some sap green, raw umber, sap green, raw umber, a little bit of burnt sienna just to get a nice there we go. I'm just going to go right across like that. There we go. 
and then we'll add some purple mountains in the distance once that dries. So we'll come back in just a second. I'll take another break for five or ten minutes. We'll start working over here. Then we'll come over here and do some more purple mountains and we'll finish up with the trees and bushes on this uh, hillside here. Okay, so we'll be right back in just a second. All right, we are wrapping things up here. We're going to do some shrubs and some trees with our beautiful landscape composition here. Satin paper, rough paper, again just recapping what we're doing here. Trying to see the differences of smooth and rough paper, how what, what kind of looks we can get. Textures, softness, harder lines, sharper lines on our washes, softer lines, more blending of paints over here. So um, we're going to do some trees now. So um, this brush might be a little big to do the trees in this smaller swatches here. So I'm going to shift over to a number four travel brush, Da Vinci Maestro travel brush. It's a, a natural hair brush just like the Raphael, except the Raphael is a number six and it's quite a bit larger than this. You can kind of see the differential, different, you know, the difference between sizes. So between different makes and models of brushes you'll see different sizes um, and different scales of sizes. So this four uh, da Vinci travel brush number four is a lot smaller than this number six Raphael. So Raphael's brushes look like they run a little large or da Vinci's run a little small as far as sizing uh, indexes. So that's one thing you have to remember with brushes. Most of all we just kind of look at the brush and we say is that going to work for what we need to do and for this I think we need the number four to get some of these tree of the foliage on the trees. We're going to need something a little smaller. If we try going with this, the number six that we've been using the whole time, it's going to be a little bit too large. It might just wind up, we'll put too much paint onto our paper for the, for the foliage on the trees. So let's try this smaller number four and see how that works. So that'll be the first thing we'll do. Before we do that though, let us get some purple mountains in this here. We said we were going to do some purple mountains here. Okay, maybe we go with a little darker. Bit of paint there. So now we're going to get some more paint. Let's do some green, sap green, raw umber, burnt sienna. Make a little bit of a mix. Maybe a little bit of burnt umber, touch of cerulean blue, and I think that should be good for our leaves of our trees. So now let's do a dry run first on a, a piece of paper. This is a, a small piece of paper. This is actually the Arches Rough paper here. So let's take a little bit just to see what it... Now instead of holding our brush like this you can kind of see how this is how we normally have been painting uh, through all these swatches, like so. Pretty much like a pencil or a pen when you're drawing with a pencil or a pen, hand resting on the paper. Now we're going to take our brush and we're going to hold it like so. Like this. So that we can get a really straight pass across the paper without having an angle on the brush like this. We want to keep the brush parallel with the paper if you can imagine. So if this is the watercolor paper here, we want to have the brush like this going across the paper making the brush strokes like this versus like this, like when we're painting normally. For the trees we want to have the brush parallel. That's why we take the brush and we turn it like this and hold it like this and then we 
or parallel to the paper and then we can so that's what we're going to do so we're just going to do a little bit of a couple of, and we can kind of see wow that's pretty nice we have we have some nice tree foliage there a little bit of blue maybe too some burnt umber and some blue to get a little bit of the darks in there like that and then you, we can kind of see how we can get some really nice foliage like that we might keep it a little bit lighter I don't know if I'm gonna get with the dark too much of the darker darks maybe we'll keep it with the raw umbers burnt sienna a little bit of burnt umber maybe not so much the blue I think we'll keep it a little bit lighter this tends to be looking like a summery type um, look to these with the green grass and the green hills and things so I think we're gonna want to go with a lighter color range versus maybe going with the real dark darks like French ultramarine blue and so forth so I first thing I'll do is we'll, we'll do the first we'll do this here the satin paper I'll take my paint get some paint on my brush dry off a little bit of the paint on a tissue and then I'm just going to try to hold the brush again parallel to the paper and just do a little scrubbing like so and not too much just a little bit and that should be good a little bit of green let's get some more green in there sap green and I think that looks pretty good then we can go into some of the darker darks maybe for our for the trunk of our tree and then we're going to go with our needlepoint brush next so I rinse off my needlepoint brush dampen the the brush hairs and we'll come over here and get some more of the same colors more of the darks and then we'll just try to get in some more of the branches of the trees like so like that perfect so there we see we have a really good tree with foliage we leave some air space between in the uh, the leaves of the tree so we want to have some sky showing through we don't want to fill this whole area in with one big blob or a couple big swatches of paint we definitely want to leave the spaces in there so you can see the sky through it that's why we take our brush and kind of scrub lightly across the paper and you'll kind of see it's a little more difficult with this softer uh, satin paper it'll be a little easier over here let's watch as we come over here we'll notice that it's a little easier to get that broken kind of feel where you have light showing through behind the so a little bit easier on the rough paper to get that effect then we'll come in again with our needlepoint brush like this then we'll do a little more um, areas we have some bushes and things over here so just a couple indications here like that and then we have it some a little bit of darker darks here purple blue just a little bit of shadowing and that looks really good this
And there may be a few more. Maybe we have a, just a couple of smaller trees here with not as much foliage on them, just some branches. And that's about all. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. We um, had a fun time here. We covered a lot of ground here with our uh, compositions. We talked about how it's important to do compositions. You can also test your different papers, your different colors, your color schemes. Here again, we used satin paper on the left and then Arches satin paper on the left and Arches rough paper on the right. And you can kind of see the differences, softer looking washes and so forth. And then here you have a little more um, nice broken uh, edges and, and broken feel of light and things like that on this paper, more texture with the rough paper. So we've had a lot of fun doing this. I'm glad you're here. And again, I always say, please subscribe if you haven't. It's right on the right-hand side. And this way you can just keep coming along every week with us here practicing and um, learning new things with watercolor. And as always, I always try to cover all different types of subject matter. So here we have some color swatches. Other times we're doing flowers. We're doing cityscapes, city scenes. We're doing boats, oceans, beaches, figure painting, portrait painting. We do everything here watercolor. So if you like watercolor and this is your medium and you're going to be working in this medium for the, the foreseeable future, keep coming back to my channel. You're going to learn tons of new information all ways. And um, we'll see you soon on the next video. And uh, please thumbs up if you like this video. And uh, we'll see you soon, okay?